in those days, there were far fewer channels to watch. And I wonder if you took the quality shows that we have now that are spread across. So I have a number. You have a number? So you, you have a finite 19, number? You of said 1971. Shows? Well, I'm just so, using, you know, the yeah. debut of On the Family. So, so in, that, good start in that year, the average household brought in seven channels. See, but my whole thing is, this, I don't wait, need a show about so, cakes. Oh, hang on. So I'd rather have, this, like, <laughs> I'd rather have, like, and we, seven I, great channels. And I will than, defend Cupcake Wars in a second, but, um, <laughs> but hang on, hang on. But now, today, the average household in America brings in 120 channels. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we know that there are more than 500 available in total. It's kind of like and before, bad food and small portions. And, 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 before, and before people <laughs> say, oh, that's only for rich people, 90% of American households as of today either have cable or satellite television. 90%. But with all due so, respect, yep. okay. so what? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I will also so, defend Cupcake Boys. But that's, so, this is the yes, second, yes. Where, this is what we yeah. need to get into, you go. Right, well, no, I mean, I, you know, when I, w I was flipping through a couple weeks ago and I came across Cupcake Wars and thought, hmm, I'm doing this panel, I should watch Cupcake Wars. And at first I thought, oh, it's like, it's so derivative. I mean, that's part of what you have. You have this universe of channels and you've got a few shows that work. And so then you have a thousand copycats. And so it was like, oh boy, they've got the foreign judge, you know, and they've got this sort of like third rate host and they've got, you know, the, the little videos of the people from different towns, you know, they've, they've got all the pieces put together. And I thought, oh, this is so cheesy. But 45 minutes later, there I am watching them squirting the frosting on the cupcakes. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's the creative process, which I think is fascinating, whether you're talking about singing or dancing or baking. I mean, I think, I think the, good, the good reality genres and the good shows give you some, they, they give you something. Here's the problem. If you think that reality shows are bad, then you belong to a very unpopular category of Americans, which is the 1%. The 1%. <laughs> and you might want to think about whether you want to be in that category. Now, may, maybe not economically, but culturally, you have placed yourself in the 1% uh, by doing that. And so it, it's dangerous. I mean, there is a, there is a reality show devoted, it's a, that's about storage lockers, right? And when I first heard that, even, even I... There's three? Four storage wars? Okay, I'm leaving. This is too much. Okay. This is... Um, but even, you know, even I, when I heard that, I thought, come on. You know. but, but the thing is that there are many, many more people than us voting with their feet to watch these things, right? With their eyeballs, with the remotes. They are choosing this, and we are establishing ourselves as being superior to them if we say that what they're watching is junk. Um, you know... If you, if you think that all of television should be PBS, you are in the 0.001%. You are the Mitt Romney of the cultural elite, <laughs> if you do that. Um, so that's really, that's really something that needs to be dealt with. Why is it that a reality show, even about storage uh, lockers, four of them, uh, is a bad thing? What is that? Why, I, I'd love to know, sir, why is that in itself a bad thing? Or, 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 or of less quality than The Sopranos? Which, it, I love. You know. it's, it's not that it's bad. I just think that, I mean, the operative phrase here tonight is golden age, right? So, I mean, uh, you know, clearly uh, you can put somebody on and they'll read the yellow pages and somebody will watch it. But the question is, I mean, do we... Do we really? really? Oh, you, we, I mean... Then why aren't there 50 of those shows? There are. I mean... The, of they, people reading the yellow pages? No, but I mean, you know what I mean. It, it, you can throw on a lot of things and people will... I mean, look at some of the stuff that's on TLC right. or Bravo or whatever. But my whole point is, does it rise to the level of, you know, excellence? And we can define excellence any way we want without being you know, kind of snobby about it. But I just, I don't see the, the whole TV landscape right now as being something that, you know, with, with few exceptions, something that's going to be remembered 20 years from now as being, you know, instrumental or taking us to another level. Homeland. Right, I said with few, oh, I, oh, absolutely. Oh, with some exceptions. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Joanna, you, you've wars. written a lot of uh, co articles, which I'm sure you've heard from your readers, uh, and they're very yeah. vocal. And do they tell you you're a snob? Uh, well, you know, one of the things I did in, in my previous job at the Globe was write an American Idol blog. And so every, <laughs> every week after, you know, after every show, I would write a blog. And I, I had like, uh, there were like thousands, tens of thousands of people. People loved 
to read it and comment on it. I mean, the thing about that show in particular, and I feel like that show's on the decline, but that show at its height was, it was the equivalent of, of being a Red Sox fan. I mean, it was, it was water cooler conversation. It was a collective experience. It was something that everyone enjoyed talking about and could handicap, and it wasn't political and it wasn't ideological, and I thought it really served a public purpose. I mean, a community purpose, and it was a lot of fun.